Okay, in number one and two, you have to tell whether the given ordered pairs satisfy a linear function. And the way you do that is you have to find, make sure that the ratios of the change in y over change in x are consistent. So for instance, number one, I'm going to draw this vertically. All right. So x, y, uh, negative two, negative one, zero, one, two. And then of course, one, zero, one, four, nine. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do change in x. So to go from Notice I'm going to each of individual ones. So this is going to be plus one, plus one, plus one, plus one. So for all of those, the denominator or the, the change in x is one. Now, z from one to zero, that was a minus one. To go from zero to one, that's a plus one. To go from one to three, that's a plus three. And to go from four to nine, that's a plus five. Now, if you notice, none of these are the same. They don't even reduce down to the same, so they're not equal. And because they're not equal, it is not a linear function, okay? It's not a linear function. Let's test number two. All right, let's go ahead and delete this. All right, let's test number two. So I'm going to take uh, the points, and again, I'm going to put them as, as a t-chart, so... We have negative 3, 8, we have negative 2, 6, we have negative 1, 4, 0, 2, and 1, 0. Now, if you notice about these, again, to go from negative 3 to negative 2 is a plus 1, again, plus 1, plus 1, and again, plus 1. To go from 8 to 6, you subtract 2, 6 to 4, subtract 2. 4 to 2, subtract 2, and from 2 to 0, you subtract 2. Now notice, if you go the ratios, each one of them are negative 2 over 1. So here's your change in y, here's your change in x, and each one of them have a negative 2 over 1. Therefore, number 2 is a linear function, and the way you would explain, or the reasoning, would be because the ratios of the change in y over the change in x are the same. On the next three problems, number three, four, and five, you're going to use the intercepts to gain uh, to graph the line described by each equation. So now, if we take we're, now when it says use intercepts, that means we're going to plug in zero for x and solve for y, and then we're going to plug in zero for y and solve for x. So let's do the first one. All right, let's plug in 0 for x. So I take 2 times 0 minus 4y equals 16. Well, that cancels out. I'm left with negative 4y equals 16. Divide both sides by negative 4, and I get y is equal to negative 4. So at 0, negative 4, which would be about right there. Now, I'm going to do the next one. Plug in 0 for y. So I get 2x minus 4 times 0 equals 16. That's gone. I'm left with 2x equals 16. Now I know that you will be able to just look at that and go x is 8, but you have to show your work. So x is equal to 8 right here. So at 8, 0. Now notice it's not on here. So we're going to have to estimate. So it's 5, 6, or 6, 7, 8. So about right here is where 8 would be. Let's go ahead and connect that. And we'll just make a little makeshift line here. All right, and there's our equation. So we've graphed the line using our intercepts. Okay, again, we're going to do the same thing on number four. Uh, let me go ahead and minimize this a little bit. All right, now we're going to plug in zero for y, because notice how the y and the x are backwards. So I'm going to plug in zero for y plus 6x equals negative 18. That's gone. I'm left with 6x equals negative 18. Divide both sides by 6, and x is equal to negative 3. So at negative 3, 0. The other one is going to plug in 0 for x. So I get negative 3y plus 6 times 0 equals 18. Okay, 6 times 0 is 0, 
whoops, let me go ahead and cross that out. So th negative 3, y bring that down? Equals ne uh, negative 18, all right? And then I'm going to divide, oh, it's negative 18, and divide both sides by negative 3, and I got y is equal to positive 6. So that means that when x is 0, y is going to be negative 6. Or, sorry, positive 6. All right, now I'm going to plot those. So at negative 3, 0, which will be about right here, and 0, 6 is going to be about up there. And then when I connect them, there you go. There's your graph. Okay, on number 5, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to plug in 0 for x. So I get y is equal to negative 3 times 0 plus 3. That's a 0, trust me. That's gone, and I got y is equal to 3. So when x is 0, y is 3. It's going to, uh, that's going to be about right there. Then, okay, and the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to plug in 0 for y. So I get negative 3x plus 3. I'm going to add 3x to both sides. All right. And I end up getting 3 times something is equal to 3. So divide both sides by 3, and x is equal to 1. So I get 1, 0, and 0, 3. So 1, 0 is going to be about right there. And what I can do is I can just draw a straight line between the two points, or the best I can. And that gives me my line of the equation. Okay, number 6, what is the slope? Now in this particular problem, I'm going to use the x and y intercepts to find two points. So negative 4 times 0 plus 2y equals negative 8. And then over here, I'm going to put negative 4x plus 2, I'm going to plug in 0 for y, equals negative 8. So if this is gone, I'm left with 2y equals negative 8. Divide by 2, and y is equal to negative 4. So my first point is when x is 0, y is negative 4. And then over here, 2 times 0 is 0. I get negative 4x is equal to negative 8. Divide both sides by negative 4. And I get x is equal to positive 2. So 2, 0. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the slope formula. So y minus y. So that's going to be negative 4 minus 0 over 0 minus, uh, minus 2. So you end up getting negative 4 over negative 2, which is positive, because negative over negative is positive, and 4 over 2 reduces to 2 over 1, and that is your slope. On number 7, we're going to write it in standard form. Remember, standard form is ax plus by equals c. So with that being said, let me go ahead and erase that. All right, now... We're going to take our y equals 2x minus 4. I'm going to subtract 2x to the other side. All right, that's gone. Now, these are not the same, so I'm going to just set them side by side. y is positive, so it's going to be plus y equals, and I'm going to bring down the minus 4. Now, notice I have it in ax plus by, but I don't want that to be negative, so I'm going to multiply everything by negative 1. Okay, negative 1 times negative 2 is positive 2x. Negative 1 times y is minus y. And negative 1 times negative 4 is positive 4. And now I have ax plus by equals c with a being positive. There you go. All right, on this one we're also going to put in standard form. It's just a little different. y equals negative 14x plus 3. I'm going to add the 14x to both sides. Now notice x and y are not the same, so I can't add those together, so I'm just going to put them side by side. y happens to be positive, and bring down your 3, and there you go. There's your a ax plus by equals c. Okay, we're going to find the slope. Remember, rise over run, so rise over run. Now remember rise is either up or down and run is left and right. Now we're going to pick a, let me go ahead and make this a little bit more solid. Okay, here we go. 
So from this point here, we're going to go down one, two, three units. So down three, and then we're going to go right one, two, three, four, five, six. So to the right, six units. So you get a slope of negative three over positive six, which is negative one over two. And that is our slope, negative one over two. Okay, on this particular problem, we want to find the slope. Again, I'm going to do y minus y. So on top, 7 minus 4. On the denominator, 2 minus 4. And so I end up getting uh, 7 minus 4 is 3. 2 minus 4 is negative 2. So it's 3 over negative 2. Or bring that negative up to the top, negative 3 over 2. Either one of these is fine. Okay, number 11, what is the slope? Let me put an E right there because it's slope of the line, not slop of the line. Now, I have two ordered pair, so I have negative 1, negative 5, and negative 9, negative 1. Notice these are just the same as the last problem, except these have a little bit more negatives. So Y minus Y is going to be negative 5 minus a negative 1 over negative 1 minus negative 9. Don't get, get confused with all these negatives. So, uh, a minus a minus is plus a positive. So you get negative 5 plus 1, which is negative 4. Negative 1 plus 9 is a positive 8. So you get negative 4 over 8, which is a negative 1 half. And there is my slope. Now, this particular problem, it doesn't make sense because I think the wording is a little backwards where it says the function gives you f of x equals 9x, gives you the distance you travel in x minutes. Well, if you think about that, if x is 1, then that means f of x is 9 miles. Because x is saying it's minutes. So in one minute, we go 9 miles. That means if x is 2 minutes, then f of x would be 18 miles. Now, I don't know about you, but you can't really run two, a two-minute 18 miles or a one-minute nine miles. So I think that's a little backwards in, what, in this description. So I'm going to go ahead and, just, and delete that. All right, now what it really means is this. If you have f of x equals 9x, well, we're looking for the range. So if I were to just make a table, okay, make a table. Here's my x's, here's my y's. Well, if you think about it, um, this is going to be f of x equals 9x. Okay, it's what we're really finding. So when x is 0, 0 times, we just plug it in right there. So 0 times 9 is 0. When x is 1, plug it in, you get 9. When x is 2, you get 18. 3, 27. Uh, 4, you get 36. And so what that really means is um, you can run one mile in nine minutes, two miles in 18 minutes, three miles in 27 minutes. So this is basically X is the miles when Y is the minutes. Okay? And so basically when I, when I look at the range, here's my range right here. So my range in this case, 0, 9, 18, 27, 36, all right? But I can also run, if since I'm running in minutes in between here, because I can run a half a minute, one and a half minute, I can also cover all the distance in between. So really, technically, what I could do is this. Let me... Uh, Let me get rid of this right here. I'll minimize this for a second. All right. And now the domain, what I really could use for the domain is, or sorry, for my range is 0 less than or equal to y, which is less than or equal to, you know what, let's go up to 36. And that could be my range. Okay, on number 13, what is the slope of this graph? So now it's y equals negative 5. Remember, positive slope, negative slope, zero slope, undefined. Based on the story I told. So positive, negative, zero, okay? 
And of course, when you fall off, you get undefined. So think about this. It's y is equal to negative 5. Well, y is equal to negative 5 across this entire line. It's equal to negative 5 there, negative 5 there, negative 5 there, negative 5 there, negative 5 there. Therefore, it's just like our zero slope, so our slope is zero. Now, to prove that, I could pick any two points. Let's say zero, negative 5. So zero, negative 5. And let's say two, negative 5. Two, negative 5. If I were to find the slope, negative 5 minus negative 5, so negative 5 minus a negative 5, over 0 minus 2. Well, remember, minus a minus, or minus a negative is positive, so that would be plus a positive. So negative 5 plus 5 is actually 0 divided by negative 2. And anything divided by 0 is 0. Now, in this particular problem, notice it's x is equal to 2. Before, when we had y is equal to negative 5, remember it was a horizontal line. Well, since this is x is equal to 2, that means x is always going to be equal to 2. And so that is this line right here. x is always equal to 2. Now, if you notice, what I can do is this. I'm going to, put a, I'm going to pick this point, oops, and I'm going to pick this point. Let's find the slope. Well, my rise is 1, 2, 3, so my rise is 3, but my run would be 0. Now, you can't divide anything by 0, so you know what? This is undefined. Okay, in this problem, when looking at an equation, how do we know that it's a linear equation? And write an example of a linear equation. So now, if in order to... Uh, figure out whether it's a linear equation. First of all, if it's this form, y equals 3x plus 1, well, this is my slope. But I, what I can do is I can pick two points. I can pick two points. In fact, I can pick multiple points. Uh, let's say when x is 0. So x, and this would be y. When x is 0, well, plug it in right there. And 3 times 0 is 0, plus 1 is 1. When I put 1, 3 times 1 is 3, plus 1 is 4. 2, plug it in right there again. 2 times 3 is 6, plus 1 is 7. And then, basically, what I can do is I can test my ratios. To get from 1 to 4 is 3. To get from 4 to 7 is 3. To get from 0 to 1 is 1, and from 1 to 2 is 1. Therefore, they all have a ratio of 3 over 1. Therefore, since the ratios are the same, it is a linear function. Okay, on this last one, draw an example of one linear function. Well, if I have my graph, and let's say that right there is a one linear function. Okay, it passes the vertical line test, and it's a straight line. Now, what makes a nonlinear? Well, if this is my graph, if I have this right here, first of all, it's not linear. It's got that hook. But it also is not a function, because when I do a vertical line test, it connects in two spots. 